Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we are talking about FlatHub as a universal package manager. And I have a few thoughts about this article. This is a neat one. Uh, of course, FlatHub is the, the main place where you put flat packs. It has major advantages over Snap in that it is not a centralized repository. The flat pack protocol itself is open. Anybody can can add themselves into the Flatpak repository as their software within their limited guidelines, but anybody also can release a Snappack repository, as it were, in order to release their package as a Flatpak and it doesn't have to go through FlatHub. So if you're a developer and you're working on test software or whatever else, you can actually have your own developer's Flatpak repo and you can install this in any tool that you have that is doing any form of flat pack management, whether that being the GNOME store or you're doing in the terminal, will be able to pull packages from those repositories. This is what makes Flatpak a really good, really Linuxy type option that I actually do like. It's not my favorite way of using software. That is the basic you know, repository in the distro I'm using is the best. I like Flatpak is probably the second best. I have had a few little issues with Flatpaks. Um, they're not as good as everybody suggests that they are. And I'm not really sure I like the whole, you know, full prepackaged distribution model, mostly because it takes a massive amount of space and massive amounts of bandwidth to download or update these things. But that being said, it is really good, whereas the SNAP model is a single point gateway and single point repository. There is really no other way to do SNAP other than going directly through SNAPcraft, uh, which has raised a few of those controversial points. Now, that being said, um, this one here is a fascinating read through here. So this is from It's Foss. And FlatHub plans to evolve as the universal Linux app store. They're gearing up for changes and improvements across the board. Here's what you need to know. Now, preliminaries before I get into this. If we're talking about FlatHub is going to be a good a good option to add on top of any distribution for extra software models. I am completely all for it. I think it is a great idea. But if their entire approach is kind of like what Ubuntu has done with Snaps, we're going to push everything in Snaps, and this means we can stop monitoring, auditing, and packaging software with our distribution so our repo seriously starts to suffer. That is where the bigger concern is. Uh, one package, for example, is Audacity. Audacity, since it was purchased and they added some spyware telemetry into it. Distros, if they are packaging Audacity, even in the more recent versions, have the ability to strip that stuff entirely out of the source code before putting it in the repository. But if the same distro is relying on Flatpak to distribute the, uh, the software, then they are going to distribute software with that telemetry still intact because that's being packaged by the developers of the software. So there are good pros and there are cons against this. And we'll look at a few more of those as we look into uh, this, uh, this model here. But to say this is an extra add-on, particularly if we get a good universal GUI means to manage Flatpak, I'm definitely all for that. I've learned how to do Flatpak in the terminal. That's usually how I do it. If I'm running a distribution that that has, supports Flatpak in the, the distribution itself, then that's kind of cool as well. I like that, but it'd be cool if we had a good universal um, uh, GUI store to do it. But here's what is part of it. Now, of course, we we covered um, we covered in uh, in the news recently that Flatpak was trying to do a new verified approach, and even in that verified approach, there were a few little bugs that came up in that software was quote unquote verified as coming from a GitHub page, but the software didn't actually have anything to do with the actual publisher behind it, which means you have a verified application that has not been approved by the person who. Who wrote that application. 
Uh, and that is some of the stuff that we still see. Now, some of those have been removed from verification. They're still working on this kind of stuff. Of course, Flatpak is trying to be a good um, alternative to Canonical's Snap. Uh, of course, I do not like Snaps at all. I think it has caused a lot more problem in the Linux world um, than anything else. Um, now, this is GNOME and KDE are teaming up. They want to do a complete rebrand re and evolution of the platform. Of course, here's their old logo. They have a brand new logo. Nah, okay, I do kind of like the old one better, but uh, the new one is, eh, I guess it's hip and modern and whatever. Um, don't really care. Um, so, uh, Flatpak, uh, Flatpak's, uh, Flat Hub, excuse me, uh, look and feel are all set to change with the rebranding spearheaded by Jacob Steiner from GNOME. Let me clarify, too, one more thing if you're not as familiar, the difference between Flatpak and Flat Hub. Flatpak is the packaging way. It is the all-in-one application. Flat, flat packs are distributed from whatever their repositories are. Flat Hub is the main repository and kind of the maintainer of how the flat pack function works. Flat Hub is that central repository where all these these things go. And if you're adding flat pack into your distro, Flat Hub is going to be the primary place that you install software from. Um, so it's basically a, a repository. It's focused on making the new identity of FlatHub not too loud and shouty with the spotlight always being on the apps themselves. Building a uh, building on a brand of neutral grays isn't quite as easy to sell, but precisely targets the main point of FlatHub. <laughs> Actually, I have a client. I'm rebuilding their website right now, and that's kind of what they want. Charcoal grays as their accent color. All right. I'll figure out how hard that is. All right. Uh, it creates a stage for apps to shine. FlatHub isn't flashy by itself. Itself, it allows the apps to be at the center of your attention. All right, if you are into UI UX, you can look at the blog post. Uh, that blog post just has the style guide, you know, the colors and things like that. There's really nothing over there that's super amazing. So here is the app, uh, FlatHub App Store to evolve. So um, this is uh, this is where their their site is right now, and you can see that what it's going to look like. Gnome Foundation and KDE EV have been making good progress to build and improve FlatHub. It's been evolving the very impressive rate since its launch. So a recent proposal last month, some interesting things have been planned on focusing to make FlatHub a Linux application ecosystem that incentivizes publishers. That is the part that's really good. When we incentivize publishers, we have the greater possibility of having good commercially available software easily available for Linux. So if uh, they're not going to want to take their code and have it available for a uh, package maintainer to just drop it into Debian or whatever else, because that's going to open up their source code. It opens them up to being copied, forked and whatever else. And then, you know, they lose what the proprietariness is of what they're doing. Now, the flat packs generally are are available to be audited. You, you can check, make sure they're not doing anything. But some people are more happy hesitant to put things onto Linux because it opens you up to being widely distributed without the ability to get paid quite as easily. And what they're trying to do here is say, hey, if we have another package where you as a developer could come in, still sell your proprietary software that is fully compatible with Linux, that is actually a win for Linux. Whether or not you would use it is a different question, but think about if if this theoretically Adobe did. Now, I still am happy using GIMP, and since I control my businesses, I can say or not. But if you work for a graphic designer that insists you're using the Adobe Creative Suite and you really want to use Linux, would you buy the Linux version of it if it were available, if it's a requirement for your job? Absolutely. And that would drive more people to use Linux if the software we had were available. And utilizing this model, it's possible that that could happen. Uh, which is really good. Simpler terms, we want to make FlatHub a fully-fledged app store that will let publishers earn off their apps, which should improve the funding situation. Once again, that is a really good idea. Now, if you're trying to say, we want to be the sole place of getting applications on Linux, I am not on board. 
the repos of your distribution are the best place to get software because I have found overall it works best with your computer. It has the fewer bugs. It doesn't crash nearly as often. It has better compatibility with your theming and UI. There's a lot of problems that Flatpak has in these things as addition to snaps and app images. They're not, uh, they're not alone in that. Now the reasoning here is um, uh, with such financial barriers prevent will prevent potential developers from getting into the open source app which in turn hampers the growth of the open source ecosystems as a whole. Another thing highlighted in the proposal, a healthy application ecosystem is essential for the success of the open source desktop so end users can trust and control their data and development platforms and the device in front of them. So what they want to do, now the first, this one here is a little bit terrifying. Let's stop and talk about this one. How will it achieve this? A recurring donation or subscription system is one of the major or additional planned. If you are having a subscription service to access FlatHub, you just put a nail in your coffin and bury yourself. You're done. If you're having a donation type model like Elementary has pulled off, that is a much better option. It's better if you say, hey, here's how you can donate to us and some of these apps are paid and you have an easy ability to sort what is paid and what is not paid, that's going to serve you a lot better. But to say a subscription model to access Flathub, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think you're going to uh, win any um, any people with anybody. It's not that Linux people are cheapskates. It's that we are inundated with subscription services. The last thing we need is another subscription service for software on a free and open source desktop. Um, that's just insane. Um, but let's go ahead and assume, okay, a subscription model to access the whole of it is a stupid idea. We're just doing a subscription basis for certain applications or, uh, you know, it's a recurring donation if you want to do that. I am all on board with recurring donations. I think that's awesome. Uh, that would be a cool thing, and it'll highlight easier ways to draw in revenue. Some people may want to support Flatpak and not know what or how to donate to it, being as that it is available everywhere. If you have a centralized, unified app store, to uh, which is easily installable on GNOME, on KDE, on Cinnamon, on XFCE, on Mate, uh, any distribution you want, Budgie, if you have something that does that kind of thing, and inside of there is an option, hey, if you want to help donate to us, that's awesome. I think that that's a great way. I think you're going to greatly increase your revenue doing that. But to say, yeah, you got to pay us for it, yeah, is dustbin of history. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Ubuntu tried that at one point in time. Didn't work well. Um, so the uh, things like review tools to prevent abusive application submissions, automated security scans, and a couple other subtle changes have been planned. Um, and so, okay, that's all fine. We definitely need to make sure that, that we have automated security scans are good, but we also want to avoid the problem that Snapcraft had where they said, well, we're not going to audit the software. We're going to trust the developers. If every bit of software in FlatHub is not audited, you are going to hurt yourself once any form of malware sneaks through. That's going to be a problem. In addition, uh, they need tools to prevent misleading application names. We're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, descriptions, uh, screenshots, etc. from being on the platform and to block them until they have been reviewed. So to sum up, recurring donation systems or subscription system, uh, recurring donation will be fine. Paid applications, I'm all on board with that. Have the option to have paid applications is cool. Or like elementary does, there's applications that you, you can say, I'm going to donate to the developer now, but you don't have to. And having a model to say, hey, this is the way we can get some money to the developer of this application in a central way. I think that that's a fine thing. As long as we also have the option for no in the event, you know, if somebody's dirt poor and broke and they just need to get their system up and running. Because a lot of the people that are successful building their stuff up, when they're profitable, man, they're going to start turning around and giving a lot more to the open source community. And some internal tools to help review it. Um, we're going to open this link up. Um, and I think we already looked at the new verification. Um, they intend to establish a new legal identity, which is Flathub LLC, to own and operate the service. And they aim to establish the following, a transparent governance process to help maintain community trust and accountability, build an advisory board sponsorship process to attract commercial sponsorships um, uh, to the service in parallel to our grant application. So they're basically 
creating a separate government entity, all those types of things, which is good. They're estimating a, a budget this year of $200,000, which is $120,000 in salaries for staff. I love seeing that so much of their cost is going towards paying the developers. That is awesome. Uh, $30,000 for, for legal professional administrative costs and 50000 going towards platform development. I think that's a good breakdown. That's a, uh, that's a, a good option there. All right. Um, so they already have fifty thousand being used for the previous phase. They have a hundred thousand confirmed and bringing it, uh, uh, which brings it out uh, to over around fifty or so thousand of their required budget. Now, um, here is the part that does cause a little bit of <laughs> going on. The remaining hundred thousand dollars has been sought from Plain Text Group, part of the Schmidt Futures. Um, by, founded by the former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt. So we want to bring a formal G Google CEO into the Linux world to work on developing a unified software for flat packs. That is terrifying. I am not on board with that. Not in the slightest. All right. Um, but, um, Anyway, I think overall it's good as long as it's a standalone, as long as uh, distributions are not neglecting their own repositories for Flatpak. If Flatpak becomes a way that you can um, that you can push um, uh, becomes a way that you can push the um, uh, the software that is uh, available uh, or the proprietary software, or maybe not proprietary, but the paid software. I'm okay with it. Um, that's definitely a good model to do. Last thing I want to do, I want to have a look over here at um, uh, I want to have a look over here at FlatHub, and uh, what I wanted to show is one little issue that I saw down here uh, when I was jumping in here. As I was looking at the different software availability here, one of the things we saw we remember we talked about verifying real applications. So one of these was Nord Password Manager comes up here by NordPass. Of course, Nord Password is one of these online password managers. And if you go back through here and read it, Easy Use Password Manager brought to you by the cybersecurity experts. Um, NordPass is Easy Use Manager brought to you by the cybersecurity passwords. Keep your passwords in a secure vault. Designed by the same team, created VPN service. Under the show more, very last line, note, this wrapper is not verified by, affiliated, or supported by NordPass. So it says Nord Password Manager by NordPass very last line tells us that this wrapper for the online security, the online password manager, is not verified by, affiliated with, or supported by NordPass. These are the types of concerns that we have when we have these unified stores. Same things I've talked about in the past with Snaps, looking at how, how if you looked at Simple Screen Recorder for a while, I'm not sure if it still is this way, there were multiple different applications that showed up. And of all those multiple applications, not a one of them was actually recognized by the developer. So I actually went over to NordPass and I clicked in to see the Linux application. The NordPass software does not recognize this flat pack. So they don't even either they don't know about it or they don't endorse it, whatever else. They do not recognize this flat pack. OK, um, and what that means is that you're getting a flat pack that you think is by Nord. It looks like it's by Nord. It says it's by NordPass here. This is not a, uh, officially NordPass. If you go to the NordPass website and you click the Linux client, the only one they recognize is the snap package. And so it raises some extra concerns. So there's kind of my thoughts that we that we have here with the um, uh, with these individual um uh, individual uh, flat packs, the flat hubs, and what about flat hub being a universal package manager? Those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.